And this, this is real right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good. How's camp? So far, so good. Getting, we're getting to the end of it. I mean, been a great experience. Uh, first fall camp's a little different than anything I've, expe I've experienced. Shout out Ciro, but first camp's been uh, different than anything I've experienced. So it's been a learning process, but been great. What's been different about it? Uh, just the amount of football in, in one day. I mean, we're here at the facility from 6.30 to 9.30 every day. Uh, I mean, but that's what we signed up for. That's why, that's, that's where we want to get. So we're enjoying it. What was that day like when you were able to run with the ones? It was, it was cool. I mean, just the experience, being able to experience um, playing with the one offense. I mean, we played with the one defense a little bit uh, with the twos as well. So um, just being able to have the, the first group receivers, first group O-line, and then trying to have it kind of being thrown into that leadership role. It was, it was a cool experience. Too fresh, then you're able to run with the ones for the entirety of practice. Is it overwhelming for you, or it was kind of like the uh, no, it wasn't anything too different. I mean, the coaches and my teammates put me in a great position to succeed, and uh, they made my job easier than easy, so it, was, it, was, it wasn't too different. Being at the facility so much and having all these experiences, what's kind of the biggest thing that you've learned? Uh, just, to, just to be in the moment everywhere. Uh, if you're in the meeting room, be in the meeting room, not looking forward to practice, not letting um, past, past practice or past meetings affect where you're at. So just kind of being in the moment everywhere I'm at. When I'm in lift, being in trying to have the best lift I can, just being in the moment always. Throughout practice, you seem to have a pretty good understanding of the playbook. You see you make good reads out there. How quick was that for you in terms of picking up the playbook and picking up the post style offense? I mean, being, definitely being here since January definitely helped. Uh, being able to just have that whole spring ball under my belt. Um, there's nothing like, like live reps, and that's, that's where you get comfortable. So uh, just that, and then also the meeting time I've had with Coach Doherty, and then the relationship I have with Jaden and Jordan, that's definitely helped me. How long does it take if it's a 30 habit to adjust to the overall speed of the game and the difference there? Uh, I mean, like I said, being here in the spring, that's that's a huge, uh, huge bonus. And I mean, I think I think just adjusting to the speed, adjusting to to college in general, um, that the whole six months I was here in the spring ball in general, uh, that that allowed me to have a smooth transition to fall camp. We probably think about the depth chart more than you guys do, but you know, you're coming into a situation where Jaden is kind of an established guy. He's brought in, he's going to be the starter. How difficult is it to be patient about? Uh, not at all. I mean, I'm just controlling what I can control. Uh, I'm enjoying this. Uh, it, it, I'm in a good situation because Jaden is like a big brother to me. And being able to just look look up to him, we have similar play styles. And then obviously he has the success and the experience that I don't. So being able to just learn from him, learn from Jordan. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in a unique position and, and, I'm, and I'm taking everything in. Did you guys become friends kind of right away? Yeah, I think I think we click click real soon because because of our Polynesian background. So I think that definitely helped. But just being able to hang out with them inside and outside of the facility, uh, we have a good relationship. So how did the podcast come along with T Mac? And is that something that you guys are interested in doing? You know, post football potentially. Yeah, I mean, like like everybody knows, me and T Mac got a great relationship. Uh, we grew up together since eighth grade, so I mean everybody knows about our relationship. But we kind of just wanted to carry that into into coming to Tucson, coming into this new life, being able to give uh, people that don't know us and people that don't know what a D1 football player's life's like, being able to give them that that point of view, and then just to be able to um, bond with the Tucson community. How is that in terms of connecting with the community, you're just living out here? It's been cool. We've, we've, we've talked to a lot of businesses. Crest Insurance is one of our, our big um, partners. So we've been able to just branch into the community. I think we'll do some more community work and then continue to film this podcast and see where it takes us. How would you describe T-Mac as a player? Uh, I mean, he obviously you guys know how special he is. He's a, he's a one in, once in a generation type uh, athlete. Uh, his ball skills, his body control, and then his pure athleticism. But I mean, his humility and his personality makes him who he is. How important is it for you um, to carry yourself in a certain way off the field, kind of day-to-day -day habits, and how does that maybe translate into what you do on the field? Uh, I mean, that's kind of how I was raised. I was raised in a Polynesian household. My grandparents, my grandfather especially, raised me to be a, a, a God-fearing uh, young man and family first, faith first. And uh, that's kind of that's the way I carry myself. And I think that that allows me to just never be content and never take, never take the game too serious and be too stressed.